G'day! Uh, welcome to UAV Futures. My name's Stu and in this series of videos we're going to go through the step-by-step -step process of how to fix any drone problem you might have, how to repair them or at least identify the problem so you can ship in a replacement, save you guys some money in the long run so you're going to spend more time in the air and less time waiting on those manufacturers to ship you out a brand new drone because in this hopper, you can see I'm an absolute drone nut, and the more people flying, the more people who can repair them themselves mean just more fun out there. So let's get into it and kick it off with today's lesson. Radio. so today's lesson, lesson number one and the single most important lesson you can learn if you are in this hobby, if you are into FPV, if you are into drones, the number one thing that's going to help you repair your drones is the ability to solder. So in today's lesson, we're going to be going through, I'm going to show you two very, very easy soldering techniques. We'll talk about some pros and cons and things that you can do. Don't worry if you've never soldered before, within five minutes of watching this video and a little bit of practice, you're going to have enough skills and knowledge to be able to repair any solder joint that you come across. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear it because they've never tried it before. It's a little bit intimidating. They've never seen how solder works. That's what this video is for. It is just out there to help you guys fix your drones and get flying. So let's kick it off. What do we need uh, in today's soldering lesson? Of course, you're going to need a faulty component. And we're going to pretend that this ESC that I've got here is faulty. We're going to be learning about, I guess, soldering direct wire, soldering wire to wire, and we're also going to be learning soldering wire to pad. We're going to be talking a little bit about some heat shrink, and I'll link all these down below. Uh, the tools that you're going to need, of course, you're going to need a soldering iron. I've got my TS100, a very, very nimble, high-performance, high-packed, uh, little soldering iron, but there's some other ones out there, so I've put some other links down there as below. This one's about a hundred bucks, but the beauty about this one, it simply can power off your drone batteries as well. So if you're out in the flying field, you're flying around in some cool places and your drone breaks and it's a simple connection, you can actually use this off the batteries you've already got. You don't need a big extra power supply or anything like that. But in saying that, I did start on some other really, really old soldering irons like this. I got this from the hardware shop. This is my first ever solder iron and uh, it was fine. It's what I started my channel doing. I soldered with this thing for multiple years. So don't worry, you don't need the best of the best soldering iron. The most important thing is basically how many watts is it? Can, do you just want it to get as hot as possible? That's my advice there. So that's still my very first trusty soldering iron. It was about $20. So you don't need the best of the best to start your repairs at all. That's how I built all my drones in the past using that thing. I just like this one because I can take it out to the field and use it as well as using it at home in my studio. Right, next, you're going to need a little pair of wire cutters, or I use these to strip my wires, uh, snip my wires, all that sort of stuff. I've got a little optional extra, which is probably gonna cost one or two dollars. Hopefully you can see this in the roof cam. It is a little piece of a blue tack. It's kind of like a sticky tack chewing gum thing. I don't know if they sell it in the US. Maybe I'll find an Amazon link or something like that. Or if you don't have that, just something heavy to hold your wires down because you don't want them moving around, all that sort of stuff. You can get little helping hands and alligator clips and all that junk, but look, just the old analogy, keep it simple, stupid. Um, that's, that's really how you should be doing your soldering. It is not complex, don't worry. All right, so with that boring stuff out of the way, I can hear you say, come on, let's get to the lessons. Let's do it right now. So the reason I like the blue tack is because I can simply push down my component or whatever I'm soldering, soldering to, and it's not going to be moving around. Now, the first thing's first. We're going to be pretending that something's broken. There's a wire that's come off my drone. Uh, this can be the wire right here. And we need to connect that back up to this pad right here. Or maybe, hopefully this is in shot, uh, you need to solder to this little pad right here. So what do we do? Number one, we're going to need to do what is called tinning. So the idea behind that is you put tin or you put solder uh, on both surfaces that you want to meld together. And then you simply add heat to them while they're touching each other and they will flow together. You don't need to add any extra solder, nothing like that. So I'm going to turn my soldering iron on right here. I might need to crop and zoom this in as well. So I've just realized it's not uh, not as close as I would like it to be, but the skills are there nonetheless. All right, let's warm this one up. I really like the soldering iron too because it warms up in about two minutes. Well, I should say two seconds. It's already at 300 degrees. I'm gonna wait till it pops to 400. And boom, 390 degrees, ready to rock and roll. So I've got my solder here and an important lesson as well. And some environmentalists out there will not appreciate this. Um, and if you've got small children, please keep them away. But I'm using some solder that's got lead in it. So it's rosin core lead leaded solder. So it's a tin lead alloy. It's 60-40. Um, I'll put a little picture on the screen as well. 
Uh, don't use the lead free stuff because in my experience, it is so much harder. It's got to get hotter. It doesn't cool down as quickly. It's just, it's a much more difficult process. If you're trying to solder and you're running into some problems, chances are you could have some, um, some unleaded solder. And also I'm using one millimeter solder. That seems to be about the right size for most of my joints. I'd probably even go a little bit smaller. Uh, you don't want to go any bigger than one millimeter anyway. All right, so let's do it. We're gonna do our first bit of pre-tinning. So this pad right here, this upper pad, let's pretend we need to connect our wire. Number one, all you simply do, make sure your soldering iron is clean. This one is. You simply rest it on there, clean it up with a little bit of solder as well, and the heat is just going to flow in there. All right, that's like our first joint, almost done. That's how easy it is. And now we're gonna to need to connect our wire to it. So, got my little wire snippers right here. We're going to carefully cut around the outside and strip it back. Uh, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist so none of the wires are hanging out frazzly dazzling anywhere. Same sort of process, clean soldering iron. Simply melt our solder onto there. And then I like to shake off the solder. Just, just don't do this inside maybe. Don't, don't flick it on your mum's expensive carpet. All right, so now you can see I have a tinned wire. I have a tinned soldering pad. Get it into a position that feels comfortable for you so you can join it. You simply, and I'm not gonna use this solder anymore. Look, I'm putting it to the side. A lot of people like to feed it in as a soldering. It's not like welding, you don't need to do that. Now I'm simply going to rest this on here. A little bit of solder on my uh, iron just to help transfer that heat. Put a little bit of pressure. You should be in and out within a couple of seconds, about five seconds or so. And that's what helps with a good iron as well. And then, oh, look at that. I'm taking the blue tack off. Bob's your uncle. We've got a very, very, that's, that's not a bad joint, mate. That's not gonna come apart. That's how easy it is to solder. So that is what I call a pad solder. So you're taking a wire, you're soldering to the pad. It could be on your board, it could be on your flight control, it could be on your ESC. Whatever it may be, that's how you sold it to a pad. Now I hear you saying, Stuart, that's all well and good, but look, I've got a broken wire. There's a break in my wire. I need to be able to fix that. What can I do? So this is what we're gonna do. This is a wire to wire uh, little connection right here. So of course, let's strip the end, taking off this silicon or plastic, whatever yours may be. Same sort of process, bit of blue tack to hold it down. Clean soldering iron. And then we're going to Get in here, feed a bit of solder into here. It's all looking very nice. If you've got some excess solder on there, don't worry if it drips off, it's all fine. But you don't want to be mucking around too long in there. You don't want to be spending, <laughs> that's almost a bad innuendo. But uh, you just want to get in and out basically, all right? And then let's pretend I've got my other piece of wire that we want to connect it to right here. And. I'm gonna do the same thing. So, filling it in. Notice we haven't used any helping hands, we haven't used any magnifying glasses, none of that sort of stuff. I don't think you really need it. Although do make sure that you're in a nice ventilated place if you're using lead solder and you can also see. So a lot of light does help as well. And then I've got my two bits of soldered wire or tinned wire I should say. Uh, a lot of people as well, and this is important, make sure you put some protective coating around the outside. So some people use heat, uh, I should, some people use duct tape or electrical tape. Don't do that, that's not good. What you wanna use is a bit of heat shrink. It's really, really cheap. Makes your joints look very professional and also stops any shorts or anything like that. Now, and you've also gotta get the right size. So this one might be a little bit too small. I wonder if we've got some larger stuff around. Let's. Um, yeah, I'm going to get a larger one because that's not going to fit once I shrink it down. Let's have a look. What's, here we go. This is one I prepared earlier. So here's a little bit of heat shrink. Slipping it on. All right, now let's join these two wires together. Get this blue tack, sorry, in the correct place you want it so it doesn't move around. You want to limit the movement as much as you can. Get my head out of the shot there. Make sure you can see. Give it a, oh, I've got to put some solder on. And that can be a problem. If you don't put clean solder on the end of your uh, soldering iron to help transfer that heat, 
you're going to be moving around. It's going to feel like nothing's happening. However, this should be a lot easier. Look at this. Boom. I can see they've started to melt together. What a beautiful joint, if I don't say so myself. Very, very strong. It's done already. Look at this. That's not going to be coming apart anytime soon. Then I would simply slide my heat shrink over. And some people, you might have a heat gun, but I don't expect a lot of people to do that. So you can just use something like a little lighter or something like that as well to uh, heat this down. Look at that. If that was your joint on a drone, that is completely fine. Oh, it's still, still pretty hot. Maybe don't squeeze it, but look, that's not gonna be going anywhere. It's not gonna be causing any sort of problem or anything like that. Now, the last lesson of today before we move on to our next lesson uh, is you might wanna remove something. So the process is very, very similar. The wires are already tinned and stuck together. What you need to do is simply put a little bit of solder on the outside of your soldering iron and try to be quick, don't stand around talking like I am, but the, the idea of that is it helps transfer the heat. This lead tin solder is very, very good at transferring heat. It's got some rosin and some flux in there as well. It's gonna help get the heat into the joint, loosen the metal, liquefy it, and then you can remove it. So I'm gonna be putting it on here. Look at that. It's already removed and off. So there we go. That is our first lesson out of the way. Stay tuned because we're gonna be going through how to diagnose your problems, how to replace flight controllers, how to replace ESCs, your drone's not working, your video's not working, all that sort of stuff. But this skill right here, how to solder is the most important drone skill or RC skill you will ever come across. And it's gonna come across in other things as well. Like the other day, there's two, two examples. This was on the side of the road and uh, someone was throwing it out. I said, yo, what's wrong with that? They said, oh, it doesn't work. Uh, and I said, oh, okay, my, I thought my daughter might like that. I looked inside, I saw some broken wires, I was able to take it home. I'm no electronic genius or anything like that. I just soldered the wires up, gave it a test, boom. Now my kids can ride around on this electric scooter that we're able to fix with about five cents worth of solder and some skills. Another example, there's a, which I'll be able to put a picture on the screen. My mum dropped a big extension lead over the other day. It's about 20 meters. It's probably gonna be like 30, $40 or something like that. And she said, hey, look, uh, we accidentally cut this when they're doing the hedging at their, their place. They so are gonna throw it in the bin, but they thought, can I fix it? Yeah, I was able to cut the wires, solder them together, make it nice and safe. So there's not gonna be any problems. It's probably not gonna pass some electrical test for you know, use in a government building or anything like that. But for some backyard use, I know that it's safe. I've seen the joint, I've done it many times. It's coated in heat shrink. It's got some stress reduction on there. It's fine. It's gonna be perfectly salvageable and usable for the future. So there we go. Saved mum some money and got my daughter a free bike to ride around on as well. So look, other than that, subscribe for more FPV related content. We've got a ton of other stuff on the channel as well. Reviews, flight footage, just having some fun, goofing around. But also if you're interested, check out this playlist because somewhere up here somewhere, uh, or in a link down below, there's gonna be more ways on how you can fix your drone in the Repair Any Drone video series. So other than that, subscribe for more FPV-related content. It's very, very hot here today, and as always, happy flying.